My name is Roger Ruffin, uh, senior application engineer, like Chris had mentioned. Uh, and yeah, we're going to take a look at SOLIDWORKS inspection, uh, how it will save you time and money, not if, but how. It's very simple and easy. But before that, you know, uh, a little bit about myself. I've uh, been with computer aided technologies for eight years, be eight years in June. Uh, over 20 years experience in SOLIDWORKS, mostly training, uh, you know, virtually more, more so than anything now. Uh, started back in 98. I got a few certificates and so forth. Uh, one thing people don't know about me is I had five years experience in sales or five years in sales. Uh, and as you can see, huge Packer fan out of Brookfield, Wisconsin, born and raised here. I'm a cheese head, bleed green and gold. You cut me open, a couple G's might fall out. You can see a couple pictures on the left. My wife and I had attended, a, I think that was the Denver Broncos game a couple years back. And that is our grandson right there, Mr. Nico. He actually lives in Denver. My wife and I are going to be driving out there tomorrow for a week's vacation. So I get to see that little booger. And the, the two slides on the right, that's me. I'm hosting and pre currently uh, with this Corona, the Rona thing going on. So i uh, got a little bit of a different look. OK, but enough about me. Let's go ahead and dive in and, you know, Talk about SOLIDWORKS inspection. What is SOLIDWORKS inspection? It is a phenomenal software that it's going to streamline and automate those balloon inspection drawings as well as the inspection reports, that first article inspection. You know, what, what does that mean? Well, what it means with, with, with this is uh, you, you purchase it. SOLIDWORKS is going to give you some templates that you can utilize, okay? Uh, those templates can be customized to your process to how it looks currently at your facility. Uh, so very flexible there. From there, once you set the templates up, you're going to build the characteristics. You're going to grab that dimension, that GDNT, any notes, finish, welds. From there, you can go ahead and create that balloon drawing by exporting it out to a PDF file or export it out as an Excel to get that first article inspection report. Very simple process. So what's the value? Uh, <laughs> it's a huge time saver. You create these documents anywhere it's from 50 to 90 percent faster. Uh, customer had gave him a demo. He said, wow, I think that's going to save me some time. He called me back like two weeks later, three weeks later goes, Raj, this is Unbelievable. I am saving so much time. So a huge time saver. It eliminates the errors and the inconsistencies. And it's creating these uh, inspection packages just with a few clicks. OK, uh, it's also compliant to the industry standards. Quickest return on the money. And then that last bullet there, OCR optical character recognition there. That's more so used in the standalone standard and a standalone professional because you're capturing PDFs, TIFF files, and so forth. And, and I'll talk about that once we get to that point. All right. Who should be using SOLIDWORKS inspection? I would say anybody that's creating these inspection documents, anybody, anybody that wants to speed up that process, eliminate those errors, need to comply with those standards. And again, the quickest return on investment. So here's our agenda, SOLIDWORKS inspection. We'll go ahead and take a look at add-ins. Then we'll look at the inspection standalone. That's gonna be the standard. I should have added that, it's the standalone standard. And then we'll take a look at the ins uh, inspection standalone professional. I'll talk about the differences there in a second, okay? So are you doing it this way on the left-hand side? Do you do it like this? Are you taking a print with your circle template with a green pen and a, and, a, and a red pen and you're measuring it and you're circling it? Yeah, that's how I used to do it back in the day. And our inspection port, uh, uh, report, actually uh, one of the QA guys just took some you know, line paper and <laughs> made the columns in the rows and then we just copied it, all right? We're gonna be taking a look at inspection. It does it all for you. And then if you're using a digital caliper or a CMM machine, uh, that's going to benefit because then you can use the professional side of it to actually measure as you go. Click in the cell, measure it, say, OK, it's going to populate that into the spreadsheet for you. I don't have a digital caliper, but I can at least show you that that side of it. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the inspection add in. You're basically working uh, right in SolidWorks. Okay, it's the add in. You're working with the native SolidWorks drawing. Could be the engineer there. It doesn't have to be a QA guy. This is the CAD side of it. And then from there, we can balloon it out and then also export it out to an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our SolidWorks add-in. I've got this clamp drawing here. Uh-oh, never fails. I thought I had it set up. I know where it's at. It's all good in the hood. There we go. And what we're going to want to do is actually turn on your add-in. I've already got it turned on. Just go to the add-ins button and turn on the inspection add-in. Now we can go ahead and use our inspection, uh, SolidWorks inspection tab and just create a new project. I'm just going to use the default template. Again, SolidWorks gives you some templates that you can go in and customize and so forth. All right. And from here, we're going to enter our information, which would be the part name. And as long as you guys are using your custom properties, you can access that by just simply clicking on the part name. You can gather information from the drawing, from the model itself, or from specific configurations. I'll grab it from the model. And just click on description and say OK, and it populates right there for us. Same thing with the part number. I'm sorry, yeah, the part number. But now, say you didn't have those custom properties in there. Hey, man, you can easily come in here and type in those values as well. I was saying, you know, I could put in the clamp uh, right. I think you guys get the gist. Might have forgot my eye, but I think you get the gist. Which vendors? You can have a list of vendors. That job number, okay? Down towards the bottom here, the characteristic information. Where are you going to start from? Number one. How do you want to sort it clockwise? And it does its best to keep it clockwise. Uh, the classification is an incidental or a major or critical dimension. Okay, do you want to extract an automatic? You could do it manually if you want. I'm going to let SolidWorks do it for me. And then the sampling size, level two, you can have it as normal. You want the AQL, you know. And then we can hit the next button here. And this is where we get into our extraction. What do we want to extract? In this case here, I do want to extract the dimensions, include them, any basic or reference or features. And you can simply turn them on or off if you don't want it. Or again, create another custom template. Okay. Uh, here's the notes. I want to bring those notes over. Any extra crypt, uh, criteria that you have in there, symbols or whatnot that you guys might have at your rim, it's not in the, the default list. You can add them. Uh, bring in the GDNT, the whole call out, the whole table, welds, finishes, like I was saying before. And we're just going next. And then from there, we're going to, let me scroll up a little bit here. You have the type, you know, which one do you want to use? Precision, that's what I'm going to go ahead and use, but you could use the range. Uh, make sure we've got our proper units selected. Down here is the template, or I'm sorry, the tolerances that are being used. You can customize this if you want, you know, on the fly. Okay, I'm just typing in a zero here. If I wanted to change that uh, two place decimal, uh, I could, you know. 0 0.003 or 4, I could do it here if I wanted to. And it's as, as simple as clicking the green check mark. And let SolidWorks do its thing. It is that simple. If we had multiple sheets, sheet 2, sheet 3, sheet 4, it would all include it. And we can go to those sheets and see those blooms and so forth. All right. We take a look at the notes down here. If you want it to actually group that or ungroup it, I'm just selecting all of the ones and for the grouping, I'm saying, you know what, let's ungroup it. If you want it to be individual like that, okay? And then do a little bit of cleanup. In this case here, I like grouping with the shared number. And as I'm 
do as as I'm doing so with the one, two, three, up to six, just for the notes, that is also modifying. I'm sorry about the mouse, uh, the mouse happy going on here, scrolling. Uh, but that will update that project as well, those balloons. Okay. So if I click on this balloon number two, you can see it's highlighted here. I can say I don't want that selected or I don't want that to be the part of the first article inspection. Okay, it's easy enough. Just check that tick box or you can go ahead and bring it back. And again, SolidWorks is going to reorder those balloons for you. Tolerances were brought in. You see the sheet. If we had multiple sheets, it will talk to us and let us know. If you wanted this to be a critical condition, or I mean a, a key characteristics, you can go ahead and use that. Okay. Up here at the top, you've got your, you know, edit the inspection, create a new template, add some more balloons if you, you know, did it manually and so forth. Update the project, launch the editor. You've got a lot of options up here that can, can help you uh, create this project or create a template and so forth. You've got your inspection methods, your edit, uh, your operations, any vendors that you might want it to bring in to, to put in that list. Then the cool part about it is it's easy enough of just creating a PDF file and just saying, yeah, save that bad boy. And I think I might, oh, it's not letting me open it up because of the, yeah. It's a balloon drawing. That's up there, though. See if I can get it over here, pop it up for you guys. Just launch that bad boy. There we go. There's your balloon drawing. Okay. From there, we can actually come in here and export this out to an Excel spreadsheet. And I'm just going to use this one here and export it. I think that's the one I wanted. We'll just save it as that. Let me bring this over here. And you can see your information, the part and so forth. I'm just on form number three, but now your QA guy or, or gal is going to come in here and start putting in some values like, oh, I just checked this part 6.350, we'll say. This particular template is color coordinated 5.500. I'm okay with that. 5.509, we'll say, out of range. Okay. Uh, this one here, if I go 12.701, is that, yep, it's still going to fall in that category. Okay. Right. And then we can go ahead and save that out and you're good to go. Okay. Very simple. That right there was your inspection add in. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the inspection standalone standard. And this is for CAD or non CAD users. So you can actually have a machine out uh, in the QA department and load in the, the, the standalone here, the standalone, uh, the standalone standard, say that fast three times, and you can go ahead and open up a PDF, a TIFF file, a DWG, DXF, pre up. The other cool part about it, I want to say last year or the year before, is you are now able to open up, say, a Creo model itself, as long as it's got that PMI, that product manufacturing information in that model. You can build characteristics off of that as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start a new project. Okay, and I'm going to navigate. Yep, I'm going to choose that template there. Say OK. Now navigate to my standalone standard and open up this PDF file. Okay, and. What we're going to be doing here is we're actually going to be selecting dimensions that we want. Okay, so we have to do a uh, grab it with like a box selection, if you will. And let me start by grabbing the part name. 
Okay, and we can click on this little lightning bolt and then we can go ahead and just grab the name itself. Okay, and it's going to go ahead and populate the, the part name. Okay, for the part number, we're basically doing the same thing. It's just doing a box selection there. Okay, okay. You can also, the same way in, in the add in, you can actually uh, type the value in there if you want to. Okay, all right. For the material itself, I should zoom in a little bit closer. I'll just go ahead and do my plus sign a little bit. And we're just going to grab or do a box selection around that material. Okay, it's that simple. You can go ahead and type in, you know, a PO number or an FA, FAI number and so forth. We can say okay to that. And now we can come in here and start extracting our notes and our dimensions and so forth. Right. And if I were to, let me zoom in a skosh here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my documents tab and I'm going to start extracting notes. Again, it's just this box selection, just like that there. Pretty simple. You're like, whoa, 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 Roger, that balloon is huge. No worries, man. That is actually the, the template size that's being used. The cool part about it is that we could customize or come back and change them. You see, I just selected those three, come to my balloon and say, I don't want the size to be 12. I want it to be, we'll say seven. Okay, All right. The other thing is that if you wanted to override it, come to your home tab, let's go to options, click on balloon, and then we can override that from there. Okay. And we can get into general and, you know, the user interface and here's the template and we'll, you know, display and export, change this to, what did I say? Seven, seven or eight. Click apply. Okay, so there's our notes. Let's go ahead and take a look at some dimensions. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and let me show you this here. Okay, so like I was saying, you can do them individually or you can do them multiple, you know, uh, multiple using the smart extract. And when you're using the smart extract, make sure that that PDF file that you're using is a searchable text layer. Okay, if you open up a PDF and you see that your smart extract is grayed out, that means that there is no searchable text layer in that PDF file. Okay. All right. Then you'd have to go ahead and do it, do it manually. Okay. So if you click on it, multiple characteristics, I'm just going to, yep. And it's, it's talk, SolidWorks is talking to us. It's saying, hey, do you want to go take a look at the settings? I'm going to say no. I'm just going to do a box selection over these two dimensions. And it's going to go ahead and just build the characteristics down here. Four, there's 80 with its tolerance plus or minus. Again, that tolerance is coming from the template that we used. We've got our five. We can come in here and extract dimensions like so. And sometimes SolidWorks will be like, wait a minute, hold on a second, brother. That's not, you know, it's like it, it didn't see it correctly, I'll say. But you can come in here and recapture and just box select this area here. Let's see what's happening. We put in our tolerance. How you like me now? There we go. Now we're cooking. Okay. We've got a dimension here. I can go ahead and grab this 12. It didn't like it. That's okay. I'll go ahead and rotate it and then recapture it again. No worries. It's all good in the hood. How you like me now? Or you can type in this area as well. Uh, where's another one? Like this reference image. I'll just bring in one more. There's six. It looks good. And I'm okay. And we can go ahead, you know, and I can add the GDNT, right? Let me do so on that GDNT. Uh, this one is actually pretty cool because you can actually build the GDNT. I do something like that there. It's going to add that characteristic. What you can do is you can come in here and just start building. 
true position, diameter, what is it, 0 0.1, and then we're going to use our datums here. That's going to be our A, that's going to be our B. And you can see, did it take it? There it goes. You can see down in our characteristics here, our table manager, now that's going to be part of our, our Excel spreadsheet. Okay. All right. And then we're doing the same thing. And, and let me just mention real quick before I go on to the next one. If, if this is Rev, what do we say? This was Rev A2 or whatnot. And now you've got a Rev A3. You can use the compare. And you can compare the two revs. And then you can also use your replace drawing to go and, and, and uh, replace the Rev A with the Rev B or A3 or 2 and so forth. I think you get the gist. And the same thing. We can come back and explain that to a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet. I think I use the M expert here. And that's cool. Just to show you, bring this bad boy over here. And that was just a simple one. I just grabbed a few of the dimensions. I think you guys get the gist. You know, there again, if I had multiple pages, again, you know, once we select those, SolidWorks is going to let us know, hey, or, or it's going to spit out and let us know, hey, that was on page two and so forth. And now we can come in here and just start adding our values, if you will. Yeah, I, I, this particular template doesn't have that color cord coordinator or there that's going to show you the red, green, and so forth. There is one in there. I just grabbed the wrong one. Let me close that out. Won't save it. So that right there is the standalone standard. Okay. Right. Now the standalone professional is. Let me click on this, this slide here. Oh, I didn't go through all of them. Yeah. Non-CAD user, PDF, DWG, create your blue and then also your Excel spreadsheet. But now the, the inspection professional is very cool because you can actually uh, uh, open up a project. It's probably already ballooned. And now your, your QA person wants to go ahead and put those values in there. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can go ahead and use your CMM import and then simply either type that value in, or if you were to plug in your digital caliper, again, you can take that measure and it's going to say, hey, you know, click OK or whatnot. And then it's going to automatically populate that for you. The other thing that you can do with the professional is bring in existing data. It's a text file or, or it needs to be a text file. So if you created uh, an inspection document that was a, a text file, uh, yeah, bring that bad boy in and it's going to go ahead and put that in the column and it's going to compare to the sheet that we're using, this Excel spreadsheet, right? Uh, so let me go take a look at this bad boy. Am I right there? Yep, I'm gonna do this. The first one, did it grab that top motor bracket? Is it gonna, I'm gonna say no to this. All right, so you can see it's already blown and so forth. And I actually turned on my CM, uh, CMM data import real quick. You, you got to turn it on if it's not. And you're basically just going to come to your general, general. I went to my options. I did that a little fast. Sorry about that. From my home tab, I went to my options and I'm going to turn on measure input and CMM data import. Okay. Now we can get to the CMM, right? Okay. And, and we'll work with that CMM data in a second here, but what we're looking for is this column here. We can come in here and change that to, you know, whatever from one to whatever you want it to be. But then what we can do is we can start adding our, you know, take that measurement, go ahead and add in what is it, 79.8. It's going to be in the green. We'll do 11 point. Uh, four. That's going to be in the red. If I do a 5.45, that's going to be in the red. There's actual a margin. Can't remember which one I did, but if you're on that cusp of that value, like if I go 19, 
0.5, I think I did 0, 0.1. You see how it's giving us that yellow? And it's just saying, hey, dude, you're almost, well, we, basically we would be past it by 1,000s, but you know what's saying, dude, you're close. And then the cool part about it is the color coordination here on your blue drawing. And then when you go ahead and save that, 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 that information is going to be there, okay? Right? You could export it out again if you wanted to. In this case, we would export out the Excel spreadsheet and a blue or a PDF file because this is actually considered a project, an IXPJ. Right? So uh, that's the that's the professional side of it of you manually entering it. But let's go ahead and take a look. And I'm going to open. I think this is the one. I'll open a couple of. Them. I'll say no to that too. And this is also, this is a project. I am opening up a project. And what I want to do here is I actually want to use existing data, that text file that I was talking to you about, and I want to just bring it in. So I'm going to add that file, and it's going to be under my professional, my CMM, and here's the text files, and they're using PC Demis. Okay, I should show you that because uh, there's other machine templates and so forth is what they call that you can use a Ferro arm, a Cameo, and so forth. So uh, this is how uh, this text file looks like, and I can actually open this bad boy up, and I can auto assign. It will it will talk with the characteristics that I brought in. But real quick here, here's the tools or the settings I should say. Whereas you can say, hey, I want to use the PC Demis or the Ferroarm, the Cameo, and so forth. A huge list. Okay. Right. But once I've brought that file in, I'm going to go ahead and use my auto assign. And I'm just going to bring in the item because it's going to really depend on what you're bringing in. And I do want to overwrite those values. Okay. I'm bringing it in new. But look at what we got here. That's not even. It's not even really close. So what we're going to have to do is come in here and say, you know what, that combination didn't work. Or that combination was just the item. Let me bring in the type and the nominal and the plus or minus. And let me hit the green check mark here. And I'll go ahead and flush those results, make them fresh. Now you can see SolidWorks is matching that 325 value with what's in that list. Okay. And there might be a couple of them that, wait a minute, this 3.206, that value's not there, but it's in the list. We can actually find that in our list. There's our 3.206. I can just do a right click and say, hey, assign that for me. And it's gonna go ahead and bring that in place. Now, there is a second file in here. Um, you know, you can bring in more than one, one file at a time. So I could have brought in both of these bad boys. Let me bring in this one here. See, did it bring it all the way up? There's that second list right there. Okay. And you can see there's one of the values that's it's marginal. Right? And we could still take a measurement and come in here and enter that if we want to. Okay. Maybe this particular dimension wasn't on the drawing when we created this, this first text file. Okay, so we can go 5001, uh, and this one could be 5. Point, I'm sorry, 5, really, Raj? 3, really, 53? We're really going to be in trouble. Uh, 3.5, I'll just say 05. Okay, and again, what we can do, because this is a project, we can go ahead and create a PDF or even an Excel spreadsheet and so forth, okay? Same process as I did when I used standard, all right? So, with that being said, SolidWorks inspection just gave you a nice brief rundown of add-in, inspection standalone, the standard, and also the professional, the, the standalone professional. And, and the benefits, you know, it's gonna reduce those errors, okay? It's very easy to use. It's quick. It's going to save you so much time and money. 
And the cool part about it is very flexible, whereas you can customize those templates, like I was saying early, earlier, to your process. How your templates look now, your first article inspection looks now, customize it, utilizing SolidWorks uh, inspection. And then you're on your way, you're going to be rocking and rolling. Okay. And then import that CMM data if need be. And with that, I just want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down with us so that we can share you, uh, share with you SolidWorks inspection and how you guys can, can save some time and money and be more efficient.